these two fellas have done a job that will astound you. This gorgeous mountain of flowers and color that you see was actually just a bare face rock cliff not too long ago. We come up with this Facebook page called Two Gays in a Garden. We set it up so that they could sort of live their gardens through our garden. So this is one of your uh, newer beds that you told us about. Um, this hibiscus is absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning. Yeah, she is a, she's a beaut. Um, this one here was a trial for, um, we put it in last July. Um, so we only bought the one because we wanted to see whether or not we could winter it over. Um, chances are when we do flowers, we'll buy either one or two. We won't buy them in bulk. Um, because first, if they're not going to survive the winter, why bother getting them, right? Or find another way to get them to, to winter over. But this one here last year, it was ready even into October, it was still putting out blooms. Wow. Um, like it started probably a week and a half ago, uh, and she will just stay continuous. But uh, it's probably twice the size it was last year, but it is a beautiful plant and just such monstrous blooms on them. So definitely get a look for more. <laughs> yes, yes, and hibiscus are very slow to start in yeah. the spring, so you can sometimes think that you've lost it, that it's a goner, and then a few weeks later it shows up. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you pull it out and you think, oh, these roots, nothing wrong with them, right? And slap yeah. it back in the ground and hope for the best, so yes, yeah, and it's a beautiful plant. And you're defying nature again, because I see this beautiful uh, border edge of uh, astilbe plants, which normally uh, recommended as a shade plant, and yep. you've got them out in the blazing sun. They are. Um, we did a three color, different color um, uh, setup for this one here. There's 54 of them in here. We did a purple to a, blue, a red to a pink, and just followed the same pattern the whole way down through. Okay. Interesting enough, this year uh, they didn't hold their blooms as long as they did last year. Um, that could be just the type of a summer that we've actually had that could cause that as well. Um, but it's one of those things, we put it in thinking we'll see whether it's even going to take. Um, but yeah, out of 54, we had 54 make it through the winter. And this sort of north is this direction, so they would get a fair amount of the, the winds and stuff. Uh, but it turned out fantastic, so it's definitely going to be a keeper for us. So. Speaking of weather conditions and the unusual summer, it's been so extremely dry. Do you water your beds regularly? Mother Nature does it all. Does um, it all. The only thing we do is our cut flowers up top. Uh, we do water those um, quite regularly. Uh, but down in here, the only thing we would do is if we put a new plant in, we'd baby that for about a week, week and a half. After that, it's on its own. Okay. Um, but for the, the no. No, you'd spend no. your whole day, you know, yeah. I'd have to take it from the salt water and figure out how to get it back to fresh water, I think. That so, or a yeah. $20,000 irrigation yeah. system. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Well, oh, and what's this ivy? This looks great. This is Engelman ivy. Uh, this one is, uh, we're just trying this. We put this in last fall. Um, did a little bit of a caging around it. We want it to go up, and then we do have another Engelman ivy on that side, plus we have a honeysuckle. And what our goal is, is to get it to go up through there, and then we want to have the two cross over. So, oh, okay. uh, so it sort of uh, gives us a bit of an opening an, here. Yeah, so, archway. Yeah. And does this change color in the it fall? It does. It turns to a beautiful red, um, and it'll, it's, it's a new plant, so it's got a lot of growing yet. Uh, it'll fill in and uh, be very beautiful, I think. And these here do turn a nice red in the, in the fall. Um, it just gives that extra pop of color and stuff. So yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. So, yep. Not high enough yet. I got to keep working on it. Well, I need a ladder. You, you said it's a new plant. <laughs> Give it a chance. Uh, but yes. Yeah. How about then we step into the garden and see a few more treasures? This here garden has uh, just over 90 plants in it, and uh, it doesn't look that large, but there's a lot in here. Um, but John and I, we try not to make our garden so that it's like plant, 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 and they're all clustered together. We like to be able to walk in amongst them. And you've got um, good aeration by leaving is. this uh, open areas between plants. You yeah. can get at them, but also the air can circulate too, it, which it does. 
is can create problems. That um, plants don't this have. one here is a cool one. This is Delphinium. Yes. Uh, this is the yep. second growth on that this year. Uh, the first one would have uh, been about this tall. Had beautiful blossoms on it, either blue or baby blue with some white. Delphiniums have such uh, colors in them that you once you look right into that actual blossom, there's so much in there. Uh, and this one here, this is the second one, and we actually went and cut off a lot of our delphiniums, and we're trying to get a second growth out of them. Okay. Um, and we, um, one of our favorites up top, we're not going to get the height, but we are still going to get the little wee blooms, I think, that's okay, going to come with it. Okay, that's what I was so wondering, will it blossom again? Yeah, yeah. yeah, and we're trying that with a couple of different things. I mean, we've been at this for five years, but we're still really new, and we're the type that we want to push the envelope and see can we get a second bloom out of it? Uh, we did the same thing with our Sylvia and stuff, cut that back and we're, we do see some, but it's not as thick as what it would normally be on its original. Of course, all the energy is going out of them and stuff, but this bed has a lot of new stuff in it that doesn't necessarily show up in the older beds. So uh, okay. this is where we, it's when we had this work finished, it finished uh, the 1st of July. We had the topsoil brought in and we did a six to eight inch topsoil in here. Um, okay. So it's a topsoil with uh, compost mixed in with it. Uh, beautiful mixture. And when we put it in, we left it for uh, probably two to three weeks. It was weedy as all get out. Um, so that's where the, um, the mulch comes into play. Okay. If we did not have mulch on this, you would not keep ahead of it. And how deep is your mulch? The mulch is probably oh, about two inches at the most. Um, and even do you top it up that. every year? The spots that really need it. Um, we've been at this now mulching and stuff for probably four years, maybe three and a half, and we're at seven pallets and there's 90 bags on every pallet. <laughs> <laughs> We're not done yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is gay feather. This is a really beautiful. It comes in purple and it comes in white. And I've I am hearing that there's now a pink out there. We don't have it, but it's a lot of these will hold their blooms and stuff. Yes. And like they'll either start at the bottom or start at the top and get their color. And gay feather is just one of those things. They're nice and thick in color. Uh, you can see this has got the nice little uh, purple coming on it here as well. Yeah. Uh, but it's just a beautiful plant, and it's just so different than the other stuff. Yeah, that's beautiful, in the garden, delicate so. leaf. It it provides a nice contrast. It does. Yeah, and bees. Oh my gosh, always full of bees when it's in bloom. It's oh, yeah. That's important. Yeah. Do you ever uh, let your plants go to seed and then try growing additional plants from the seed? Um, we are trying it this year on some of our cut flowers, so some of our annuals that we're mess we deal with. We did do it with uh, the delphiniums. Uh, we actually had 12 of them that came back this year for us. Um, delphiniums are, we found, we did the two trays of 72. One tray was a complete bust, like we had, I think, three that came up in it. And then the other tray did extremely well. There's probably 50 or 60 that came up in it. Um, but. It's, it's trial and error, like some of them, they want them in a cool spot, then you take them out and then you can try to grow them from there. Uh, but an interesting one that we did get, and it's not from one of ours, but we bought it this year, it is the banana plant. Um, so it's not a banana tree, it's a banana plant. We bought one two years ago in, um, at Mayfields in St. Stephen. Yes. And uh, it grew like about this tall. Uh, September came, it took an awful hit, we cut it off. Um, it was in one of our containers actually and uh, we knew we didn't have room in our place for it so a friend of ours said she would take it anyways we sent it over to her mother's place and it outgrew her mother's place and now it's going back to my best friend's place and there it can grow to eight to ten feet like it's a monster Whoa. like the leaves are that big on it so anyways we went and looked them up online. Uh, we've got 13 plants that we're going to try to grow, but you have to start them in December just to get them to come up in the spring. Okay. So that's yep. going to be so. grow lights in the whole nine yards for six months. Yeah, and I presume the gay feather does go to seed once it, the blossoms are done? It does, but they are so cheap to buy as far as corms go okay. that it's just as easy just to as buy easy. them in the corn. Okay. So right. I think if you did it in the seed, it would take probably three or four years to get it to, big enough uh, to what, you know, a corm would just easier to work with, I think. Okay. so. Um, but Maltese Cross is another one. You can see all the seed pots and stuff on the yes, top of that. Yeah. So we may try some of that for next year as well. So, okay. But yeah, she's a beautiful, uh, when she's in her glory, she's a beautiful spot. Well, so. there's a bit of glory right here behind uh, me. These Sorry guys to are turn new my for back, us. Yes. Um, this, this one is here great. is, uh, of course, cornflower. Um, we actually use some of these in our cut flowers as well. 
Uh, we use them in the full stage of with their blossom, and yes. then we'll take all of them off and just use this piece as well. Okay, do you dry um, the centers like that We can, for we do, uh, we have some that we have in the house right now that we're sort of playing around with on what we can hold over and what we can't hold over. Uh, but the corn flowers, they come in so many different colors. Like we got this one here, we got a beautiful pink one here behind us with the orange tops. They come yeah. in yellows. Actually, the yellow is actually just behind us here on the side. So, right. um, but and they are gorgeous. This is interesting because some of the newer uh, blossoms here are still have uh, more orange tinge to them than, than the deep red. Yeah, and when they first come out, they're more of this, and then they sort of, their leaves will even spread out to get a good size to them here. Okay. But we had the penstemon here beside it, and and that's why this one here is sort of leaning this way okay. because it sort of grew so out tall. and up. So we've cut this one off because it's already done its thing. And that's why you can see we've got new growth and stuff starting to come out here on the sides of it here and here as well. So this actually should have been able to fill in its own spot. We just had another one here beside it that sort of crowded it over little, a bit. Grew a little bit quicker than yeah. it did. Yeah. So, uh, but that's all all stuff that you learn in gardening and stuff. But uh, this garden has some really beautiful stuff in it. Yeah, let's move um, on down and see a few more items down and there. And hookah, love hookahs. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, they come in so many different colors and yes. stuff. And Jonathan did a beautiful border up on uh, up next to the house in a burgundy. And then we filled in the centers with uh, snapdragons. We've got daylilies in there, hostas in there. And uh, he even did, I can't remember what it was called. It was a spring flower. Alliums in there, okay. and he did a and tulips, and he did it in purple and white, and it was gorgeous this spring. So, and again, you're defying nature because most <laughs> most uh, information about uh, hookera, uh, coral bells, they sometimes yep. call them as well, always suggest it's a plant that likes the shade. They do. The lighter the color, the more shade that it that it should be in, and we found that we've got some lime ones and some apple ones up there uh, that if you put them out in the sun, they will literally they, burn okay. right down to nothing. These ones here are pretty hardy. And so. at least they get a bit of shade from some of the taller plants that you have around exactly, them. Exactly, so. yeah. Yeah, this one here is actually the uh, pink be oh, the uh, pink Baptisia. Baptisia? Okay. Yeah, we have two of them in here, this one and that one. Uh, this one, of course, the white phlox. We actually, when we put these in, we had a bunch of plants and we just started. So actually with this and the pink, and then you get that into the white, and then you get the Maltese cross with the orange. And the and beautiful purple speedwell. Yeah, and... this one has a disease called um, um, uh, powdery mildew, okay. so which Let's, causes yeah. them to go this way Let's on the base. See if... Um, but you can see yeah. down here, we can chop this all off and uh -huh. that will come back because there's all kinds of new growth yes, down there. Yes, you can see the and new growth. And it's probably yeah. the, what we, the best thing for us that we could do with it actually at this time. So, But the bees love this. They love this area. Over the duration of the last few years since you've been increasing your volume of plants, have you noticed uh, a marked difference in bees? Uh, butterflies, hummingbirds coming to your area? Uh, definitely the bees. Uh, we're not sure where they're coming from, but um, like this is one of my favorite spots for sitting in in the mornings and stuff like that. And you get the bees are just around you all the time. But we've got a lot of different things in our gardens right now that the bees really love. Uh, the monarch butterflies are really huge on them. Uh, last year was probably our best year for monarch butterflies. This year, we've probably only seen a handful or so, but. Every day you get to see the odd one or two still flying around and stuff. But the bees, all kinds of bees in here. And hummingbirds are starting to increase. Both this garden here, which is a fairly new garden, but it's not our newest garden yet. <laughs> We've okay. still had other ones up top. <laughs> this um, is going to be a five episode show, folks. <laughs> It's like one of my videos. I say, John, we can do this in 10 minutes. <laughs> they never last. Um, but yeah, bees, huge, huge increase in the bees for here. So, which is, we're really happy with that. Um, uh, we don't mind them here at all. We did a couple of garden tours and I had just told them up front, I said, if you're allergic to bees, get the EpiPen close because chances are we're going to run yeah. into them. So. And that is a serious problem that a lot of gardeners have. And some people think it's just all oh, like a mild, it's an, a bit of an allergic reaction when in reality it's a life and death it reaction. Is. So. Yeah. yeah, you have to plan for everything. So, uh, but this garden here. Um, more corn flowers, more, these are yeah. fabulous. And They're, these, yeah, but I mean, just yeah, that in itself hand. is yep. gorgeous, you know. Yep. Um, we do a lot of yarrow. Yarrow was something new for us last year. Okay. Uh, that was actually a, a red one. Uh, you can see we got just a. A little, oh, a little bit of red there still left. Just a little yep. stem of it here, yep. right? Yep. Uh, but there's so many beautiful colors in the yarrow. Um, and have so, you had any problems with an invasive yarrow? I had one that took over, took um, years to get rid of it. I know that a few years, uh, 
quite a few years back when I used to grow at my other place. Um, I had some smaller gardens there, just your normal <laughs> run of the mill stuff. A normal garden, okay. Right, a normal <laughs> garden. Yeah, one that you didn't get out of control of. Uh, and I found that there was certain ones that you had to be really careful of because they did take over them very quickly. Yeah. Um, so when we put these in, we made sure that we could make sure we could control them and if they were something that was going to blow out on us then we would just rip it out and okay. put it someplace where it could take control by itself but everything we found so far and we've probably hit three or four different at least three or four different uh, greenhouses uh, we've haven't had a problem with any of them going out on us now maybe a different type of soil or something like that might change all of that for us but okay. as it stands right now that's last year's plant stayed nice and uh, nice and grouped together she can have that home until she's done. So okay. yeah, yeah, Sounds it's beautiful. Good. So, oh, Trevor, what a fabulous little sitting spot! A great little patio. This, folks, can show you that you don't need a, a great big space. You can have a little five by five and two great chairs, and you're you're in heaven. Yeah, it's a beautiful view here. Um, we set this up. We was going to actually put a bigger table in the middle and do some uh, concrete benches and stuff around it. Um, not saying that's not going to happen eventually, but I'm saying for now, we're looking at, yeah, we love sitting here in the mornings and stuff with the coffee, looking out over the basin. It's just gorgeous. Yeah, and then you've got all view. of these flowers and stuff that just keep blossoming uh, the whole season long. So you've got a real um, treasure right here. We do. Just behind this post. Yes. This is Nephophia. Yep. It's a beautiful plant. Um, they did extremely well. I think we put three in here last year, two came back. Um, so we count that as a win and it's worth the worth us investing into the plants. So um, they are something that are quite difficult to grow. Um, we're not quite sure what we're doing right with them. Um, but um, one thing a lot of people will do is in the fall, they do it for two reasons. Um, they will clean up everything in the fall. Um, and so all of the foliage that drops down, they do it to sort of keep the disease and the bugs and stuff out of there. We don't do that here. We do our cleanup in the spring. And the reason we do that is that foliage that drops over is going to be something that's going to help protect that plant until spring. Yes. Um, so the snow and stuff will get on top of it and we do our cleanup in the spring. Okay. We'll cut a lot of the stuff back in the fall. Uh, but as far as cleanup, we don't do it until, until spring. I figure every bit of cover that's over top of that plant is going to give you that much more of a chance, especially you get into the freezing rains and stuff like that. So Yes, and the grasses can be a bit sensitive to the, the freezing rain in they particular. Can. And right behind it, a fabulous hydrangea. Is that a quick fire? It, it is the quick fire, okay. you're right, yes. I have one similar, well, it's the same actually, it, that's why it looked familiar to me. Yeah, it's a beautiful plant, love how it goes from the white to the pink. Um, yeah. This one here, we'll chop that baby back here in the fall. Next year, she should be even bigger than that again. Uh, but there's some really cool plants in this bed. I mean, that's uh, it was uh, <clears throat> just sort of a, we knew we wanted to do something here. We knew we wanted the pop as soon as you can buy the alders here on the property next to us. And we wanted this because just from the driveway, there was nothing there. It was just a ditch and boulders and alders and stuff. It was just a disaster. And then we just, you know, transformed it into what we're looking at here. Do so. you have before and after pictures of your property? Yeah, we do. Uh, we have it right from where the excavator was sitting up on top, on top of all the trees that we saw it down. <laughs> we have photos of that. I think um, we're going to have to try to work a few of those photos into into our our web page or something oh, that'd because be cool. I yeah. think people w would really appreciate seeing the incredible difference because it's so stunning now. You, you, it's hard to believe that it was just a it a just cliff. a bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's one of those things, and we, it's just once we start, you know, uh, people see this as a lot of work. They're like, oh my gosh, how much work do you guys put into it? But for John and I, it's not work. I mean, it's we start in these gardens and say, mm -hmm. oh, this is going to be so cool, you know, and yeah. then you wait for that spring and we're like, come on, spring, come <laughs> on, get the flowers up. But we've got uh, daffodils in here, we've got tulips in here. And this stuff, fabulous, so. great big tall Siberian husky. Is uh, that that one, Japanese iris. iris. Yeah. Siberian um, husky. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new in the garden. Too. No, well, yeah, probably, you might even be closer than I am. So, uh, yeah, we got the Japanese iris there that has beautiful yellow flowers on yellow, it. Yellow, okay. Um, but we also have, and I, I can't believe it's actually even in bloom at this point, is the bearded iris, and um, it's got a beautiful yellow coming on it right now. Oh, um, right. And of course, that is late for an iris, it is. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, it's one of those things that you just never know, right? So, uh, but it's beautiful. Love the color on it. 
And last fall in October, the one on the point, it actually blossoms, so, and that's in October. So. Okay, um, and you've got one delphinium in bloom over there. Yeah, another one here as well. Right. Um, but that one there has some really beautiful colors into it because it's the nice, nice soft blue in the middle and it goes to the darker blue and it goes to the purple. And it's like some of these plants, you get inside their flowers and I'm they are just stunning. amazing, know. you know? Yeah. Um, Bee balm. Uh, we have that in the uh, in the pink here, and of course we have it in the red. Hummingbirds love bee balm, okay. um, and we'll sit here and watch them fight all that. Hummingbirds. Everybody say they're cute. They fight they, all day they, long. They are. They're very <laughs> aggressive. They're very aggressive by nature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is a beautiful garden. It's got a lot of stuff that we don't have in our other garden as well. Oh, so and it's stunning. And as you say, the view is is just spectacular. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a really sweet spot. You have a rough day at work, come down here and park your butt in one of those chairs, and it is just <laughs> so relaxing. So, but yeah. But yeah, there's lots more to see. I know, I think we should start <laughs> heading up to what you refer to as the cutting gardens. Yes, and the new garden, new garden, new garden. Okay. Uh, the, this is the new garden, <laughs> we have the new garden, new garden. <laughs> okay, you've got them graded. Yeah. And because you also are involved, your cutting garden, you're involved in preparing flower arrangements for people for sale. Yes, that is new. Um, we actually started in February. Um, John wanted to get into the cut flowers. I thought this will never fly um, just because we're so far out and um, we've had an amazing summer with it. Uh, yeah, so we'll get a chance to take a look at some of those. Uh, we start in March and that's when we start getting our, we've got enough room in there to do right now, 64 trays of 72 plants in two big grow, uh, in one grow room, but two big banks. And we're buying another one this year because we don't have enough. <laughs> All right, let's head up there. Let's head up, right, folks, wonderful. there's lots more to see. What a wonderful display and variety and color here in your, your cutting garden, as you call it. You said you just started this recently? Yeah, we just started this summer. Um, this summer? Yeah. And yeah. you've got this range of... <laughs> yeah. Actually, this whole upper section has been, since March on, uh, has been completely built uh, from the raised beds to the half inch minus to the greenhouse. Everything here is we've put in quite a spring. Um, but the colors and stuff that we're getting up here right now, um, we started doing the bouquets in uh, probably late June, early July. Um, the snapdragons were really doing really well back then. Uh, zinnias, of course, they're nicely getting their yes. stems and stem length on them now. Um, Great but the, colors. There's beautiful colors in these. Um, Orientals is what we used early on for a uh, focal flower, like the center one. You, when um, you say Orientals, you mean the Oriental lilies? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, the Asiatics and stuff. Yep. Um, luckily, we have not had the bug here uh, that a lot of people get with them things that are the just... The red lily bug. Oh, they are just Vicious, terrible yeah. on a garden, uh, especially on the Orientals. Um, yeah. But yeah, they grew well for us this year. We're running sunflowers. We had nine different types of those this year. I think we had to have planted close to six or seven hundred probably sunflowers, I think, all summer long. It was How crazy. Many? In different successions, I think we're like six or seven hundred. It's <laughs> if you've got a tray, you've got to put something in it, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but it, we've you, even got You some. really outdo a lot of the professional and long term gardeners that I know, let me tell you. We just don't know happy medium. We really don't. <laughs> well, you know, um, happy. You got the happy part, right? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so we use uh, lemon basil as one of our fillers as well. There is a, a <laughs> tomato plant in the midst of all this. We have no just, idea how that even got here, to be honest. Just loaded um, with, but with she's, tomatoes. She's doing well. It's one of those things. Yeah. I've got some in pots that are doing terrible. What? This one we don't bother with, know, and it's doing an fine. Another stem over here loaded again with, with uh, tomatoes. Yep. Wow. Jonathan hates tomatoes. I love them. So, oh. yeah. But yeah, they're doing really good. But the asters, beautiful cluster of asters in here. We use sunflower, straw flowers. Uh, this here is a star flower. Um, and we don't even do it for the blossom. We actually do it for the seed pods. Okay, it's um, very pretty, it very is. delicate. It's, yeah, it's amazing that, you know, I mean, this is an after part of the flower and it's got that kind of a design to it, very like a globe. It's really beautiful in, in itself, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, geometric, it's fabulous. Yeah, it's, really it's beautiful, yeah. so. But yeah, we've had quite the summer. Um, we were selling on Friday nights and some Saturday mornings and Friday nights we'd be usually selling out. Um, so we'd work all day, 
come home, put them together, and a lot of them we were building them as people were driving in the driveway. So um, it's been a very exciting summer for us. And do people select the colors they want yep. in their particular bouquet? They can even build their own if they liked. Okay. Um, we got uh, we found most people that when they come in. They didn't want to put it together, um, but we were not professionals at this when we started either, and we're still not. You, you said that um, about gardening too. I know, <laughs> but they're like, oh no, I'll pick the flowers, you put it together, so. Uh, um, you got a little handbook and you <laughs> Well, no, we just, the first one we did was on our deck over there actually, and um, we just put it on our two gays in the garden Facebook page and said, this is just by the seat of our pants turned out beautiful. Um, it could have been just as big a disaster as not, but it turned out really well. Um, but I think next year, I, next year we're doubling up on everything. Uh, we will have lots for next year. Uh, we've increased uh, how many different types of flowers we're even going to be working on. Uh, this area here is going through a complete transformation. Dahlia beds being ripped out. The lower section over there is going to have all raised beds in it. We're doing raised beds up top. Okay, you've made so. your point. You've got the segue that we have to come back and do more filming in the <laughs> spring. Is that what I'm understanding? I can tell you this place is ever-changing. Um, right. And we're really thrilled that uh, uh, you guys were able to come out today and you know and go through the, through the gardens and stuff with us. For us, it's just a passion of love, but um, a lot of people are driving by and they stop to take pictures and stuff. And that tells us that, yeah, we do have a little bit of a paradise here. Trevor, thank you so much for taking so much time to show us your fabulous garden paradise here today. We've totally enjoyed it. I hope the folks have enjoyed watching it. I think they will. And you've paved the way for us to come back in the spring and catch all your new developments. And we hope that folks, you have enjoyed watching Gardening by the Bay. I'm Mary Casement, your host, and hope to see you again soon. Thank you.